everybody, this is Audrey, also known as Noble Strength, and welcome to my channel. And today you are tuned in for devotion time. One of my favorite things to do is to encourage others through the Word of God. Today we're going to talk about kindness, and I know that seems like a really like simple thing. And what is there to say about kindness? I mean, you just treat people like you want to be treated. Well, yeah, you can simplify it in that way, and it does seem like an easy thing to do. You hold the door open for someone, you say please, you say thank you. Oh, that's relatively easy. Well, yes, being considerate is an easy thing to do. We don't always make that choice to be kind in every situation, but it's something that we can practice more on. And I really want to look at God's perspective on kindness. And I want to look at kindness from a supernatural standpoint, because I want to take it a step further than just going through the motions of doing what you've been taught to do. And I want to first define the word kindness. Then we're going to take a look at a scripture that I think is the foundation on what we should start on. So let's take a look at the definition. Kindness, the quality of being friendly, generous and considerate so we know that kindness is all of those things it's also of good or benevolent nature or disposition of a person so a person can embody this and i was impressed in my spirit to speak on kindness after reading this particular scripture for i don't know uh, for the umpteenth time. This is a scripture that we've all heard and we've read probably numerous of times, but for some reason, the word kind stood out to me. And it was like God was impressing upon me. That is what I want you to focus on in your life even more. And, you know, not to pat myself on the back or anything, but I do consider myself a generally kind person. But God was, you know, speaking in my spirit that there's room for improvement. And so, this one is 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And love is all those things, but I want to focus on the kindness. And it all just really melds together and work together. Because when you think of kindness and being considerate, you do think of not like losing your patience so quickly and getting angry with people. It's all of those things together. And, you know, even when it comes to gossiping, that is something that's evil. It is not considerate of the person that you're talking about. So again, that fall, it all is all encompassing when we talk about love and how we're just breaking down actually the characteristic of love and focusing on one characteristic of love, which is kindness. And you know, it's amazing how God will speak to me in my spirit because I read that verse and like I said, that particular word just popped off the page and just really resonated with my spirit. But then it's almost like I got confirmation that this is what I should be speaking about just within the last couple of days. So that's why I want to go ahead and do this now. I was at the Dollar Tree and I'm in the checkout line and I have all of these cupcake little holders. And I was just buying these to use in the art room to kind of store paint in. So the lady who was checking me out said, oh, wow, you must be doing a lot of baking. I said, no, I'm actually an art teacher and I'm going to be using these as paint trays. And so she's just got in this topic. I it just brought back memories of her childhood and her art teacher. And she made the comment, oh, I remember my art teacher so well, my middle school art teacher. And she said her name and she was just saying how kind this person was. She said, oh, Miss So-and-so was so kind and I just loved her class. And I said, what was it about her that was so kind? What do you mean? Because my curiosity got piqued because God had already been impressing in my spirit about this kindness thing. So I was like, what was it about her that was so kind? She said she was just this even-tempered lady and she treated everybody as though they were special and you know she just made you feel welcome in her classroom and she never you know yelled at you she like she was just even tempered and she's really patient with us and she just really loved her job and she made you love 
you know, art. And I was just like, oh, wow, that is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that with me. So I just went about my day. Then yesterday I met up with a girlfriend and we had dinner. We had not met in a long time or talked in a while. And lo and behold, she brings up the scripture about love is patient, love is kind. And to me, that was just confirmation that this is what I need to be speaking on because we had not shared uh, any discussion prior to that. Like I said, we hadn't spoken in a while. And just the fact that she brought up that particular scripture that God, you know, led me to was just to me confirmation. So I want to take a look at some people in the Bible. Now we know Christ is the ultimate example for anything that as far as character, human character that we should be developing. But I want to take a look at some everyday people like you and me in the Bible who exhibited some great acts of kindness because it's easy to be kind to people who are kind to you, but it's not so easy to be kind to those who are not kind to you. So I'm talking about that supernatural kindness that we can only get through the Holy Spirit and dwelling in us and strengthening us and empowering in us to walk in that way. So let's see here. I want to take a look at David, King David. King David was a man who is after God's own heart and he exemplified kindness on many occasions in so many ways, especially when it came to Saul, because Saul was the king who was in that physical position as king, even after David had been ordained to be king and, and David had to wait some time before he was put in that position, even though, you know, it was prophesied that he would be king by the prophet uh, Samuel. And during that waiting period, he was in a constant trial. He was being chased by Saul. Saul was wanting to pursue him and kill him. He was threatened by David. And during that time, when David was on the run, there were some times that David encountered Saul when he was in a very vulnerable state. And he could have very well killed Saul and taken the throne by his own means and in his own strength. But David was a man of God and he was also a man who had kindness in his heart, even for his enemy. Now, how supernatural is that to have kindness for your enemy and love for your enemy? Okay, let's take a look at 1 Samuel 24. It says, David spares Saul. Now, this is the first time that David had an encounter with Saul, but yet he spared his life, okay? So then this is in 1 Samuel 24, verse 17. Then he said to David, you are more righteous than I. This is Saul speaking. For you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, Will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. So when you show acts of kindness, especially in a supernatural way that only God can you know, work through you to show kindness, trust me, even your enemies will bless you just as Saul blessed David with his words because he knew that that was God. You know, sometimes we can minister to people through our actions and just by showing those acts of kindness, it can move a person's heart. That is how powerful the Holy Spirit is. Our acts of kindness can be a miracle in someone else's life to move them to maybe even want to turn their life around or to reconsider how they've been living their lives or how they've been thinking, etc. So just remember your act of kindness. When you submit to the will of God, and you say, Lord, work through me and help me in this situation to be kind to a person who's only shown me evil. When you do that, you open the doorway for miracles to play, take place in the spiritual realm. And you, at that point, are working for the kingdom and edifying the kingdom. So I just want you to look at your acts of kindness, not as these just day-to-day, -day, mundane, considerate things that you do, but really consider where are some areas, where are some opportunities that I can be kind to someone 
who probably hasn't been that kind to me, whether it be on the job, even in your home with your spouse, if that person is mistreating you, you know, I know it's hard sometimes. You, you know, resentment can build up and you just want to return evil for evil and you want to be spiteful and you want to be vindictive. But ask God to empower you with the supernatural strength to be kind. You being kind and the lineage you leave behind for your children, I mean, it can be impactful for generations. People remember a name. You can establish your name through your kindness and how you treat others. So there's two ways that you can impact the kingdom just with kindness that I've shown you uh, through scripture. One, by showing kindness to your enemies. Another, by just being kind throughout your everyday life and that leaving a legacy behind for you know others. And how many ways has God shown us kindness? through a plea and petition that we've asked of him. That is why it's so important to pray. Pray for, you know, the act of kindness to be bestowed upon you so that you can extend that to others. Because when you're shown that kindness, you know better how to demonstrate it to others. That is how we learn through demonstration. So God is our perfect example and Christ extended kindness countless times in scripture like with the woman at the well that to me exemplified kindness he was not judgmental of her and her five husbands he didn't condemn her he just showed so much kindness in the way that he spoke to her and we can do the same thing the way, the way we speak to people let's check our tone let's check our motives let's just look to be kind to people in more ways than just holding a door open or saying please and thank you. But anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. I hope that was impactful to you. I want to leave us with prayer as we meditate on these scriptures and these acts of kindness. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your gift of kindness, Lord God, that you bestow upon us each and every day of our lives. Lord God, we see your acts of kindness through other people, but we see your acts of kindness through you, Lord God. And just even through nature, just the fact that we can look at your beauty and your creations, Lord, is an act of kindness that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord God, for all of your beauty and the love that you extend to us. And help us to focus on that characteristic of love that is so impactful and empowering when we submit ourselves to you. Father, I just pray for each individual who's tuned into this channel, Lord God, to receive a word. May it edify them, may it build them up, may it strengthen them in their day-to-day -day walk, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel. I love you guys, and may you be encouraged to go out and be kind in a more uh, powerful way than you normally would. I love you. Thanks so much for tuning in, and remember to be a good steward of all that God has given you because he loves us so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.